We want to describe the type of transformation that would occur to the basic function f of x. We're given y equals four times f of x, y equals one fourth times f of x, y equals f of five x, and y equals f of one fifth x. Looking at these first two, notice how we're multiplying f of x by a constant, where f of x would be the function values or y values. And since y values lie on the vertical axis, these two will either give us a vertical stretch or a vertical compression. But then for the next two, notice how we're multiplying x by a constant, which will then affect the input of the function. And the inputs lie along the horizontal axis or x-axis, and therefore in this case, these two will give us either a horizontal stretch or a horizontal compression. To better understand what's happening here, let's take a look at some notes and some graphs. Let's first consider y equals a times f of x where y equals f of x would be the graph of this middle function here in blue. Let's first consider what happens when a is greater than one, let's say a equals two. Notice if we graph y equals two times f of x, the graph is vertically stretched. The reason it's vertically stretched is because in order to find the corresponding points on two times f of x, we multiply each y coordinate of the basic function f of x by a, or in this case, two. So because we're multiplying each y coordinate by two, we say this graph would be stretched vertically by two. Notice how the function values of f of x go from zero to four, but the function values of two times f of x go from zero to eight. Now let's consider when a is between zero and one, or more specifically, let's say when a is 0 0.5 or one half. Notice the graph of y equals 0 0.5 times f of x is vertically compressed because to find corresponding points on 0 0.5 times f of x, we would multiply each y coordinate of the parent function f of x by one half. And therefore we can say the graph of 0 0.5 times f of x would vertically compress f of x by one half. So going back to our examples, if we have y equals four times f of x, this will vertically stretch f of x by four. And for y equals one fourth times f of x, this will vertically compress f of x by one fourth. Now for these next two examples, let's consider y equals f of bx. Again, notice first in blue, we have the graph of the basic function y equals f of x. And now let's consider when b is greater than one, more specifically, let's say b equals two. Notice the graph of y equals f of two x is actually horizontally compressed. Notice along the x-axis, the parent function goes from negative four to positive four, but f of two x only goes from negative two to positive two. So it's actually half as wide as the parent function. Let's talk about why that makes sense. Notice on the parent function, this point here and this point here would represent when f of four equals zero and f of negative four equals zero. But notice on f of two x, the input would be four and negative four when x is two and negative two because the input is two times x. When x is two on f of two x, notice that we would have f of two times two or f of four, which would give us the function value of zero. And when x is negative two, the input would be two times negative two, giving us an input of negative four. To find points on the function f of bx from the corresponding points on the parent function f of x, we'd actually multiply each x coordinate of f of x by one over b, not b. So in this case, notice how b is two, so we'd multiply each x coordinate on the parent function f of x by one half. And because of this, we say that when b is greater than one, f of bx will compress the graph of f of x horizontally by one over b. So the green graph is horizontally compressed by one half. 
And when b is between zero and one, let's say one half or zero point five, notice how the graph is horizontally stretched. Notice how the red graph goes from negative eight to positive eight along the x-axis, and their parent function only goes from negative four to positive four. The reason this should make sense, again, is because notice when x is eight and negative eight, we would multiply these x values by one half to determine the input into f of 0.5x. When x is eight, 0.5 times eight would be four. We know f of four is zero from the parent function. And when x is negative eight, 0.5 times negative eight would be negative four. We know f of negative four is zero from our parent function. So once again, to find corresponding points on f of bx, when b is between zero and one, we multiply the x-coordinates of the parent function by the reciprocal of b, or one over b. Notice here, b is one half, the reciprocal of one half is two. If we'd multiply each x-coordinate of the parent function by two to find corresponding points on f of 0.5x. So going back to our last two examples, for y equals f of five x, this will horizontally compress f of x by one-fifth. And for y equals f of one-fifth x, for y equals f of one-fifth x, this would horizontally stretch f of x by five, which again is a reciprocal of b. So for example, if we consider the basic function f of x equals x squared, four times f of x would be y equals four x squared y equals one-fourth times f of x would be y equals one-fourth x squared. And for f of five x, the input is now five x, so we would have y equals five x squared, or 25 x squared. And for y equals one-fifth x, we would have y equals one-fifth x squared, which would be the same as one twenty-fifth x squared. I hope you found this explanation helpful.